Now the last method involves analyzing this about the point of contact with the incline right here. This is also a Newton's Laws method, but we're going to use this point right there as the axis of rotation. Now how can we do that if it's not rotating about that point? Well, guess what? Take a look at this. So what I've got right here is a little, uh, this piece of tape is, you can see that it's rolling. I've got this little piece of tape rolling along this book right here. You guys see that? Uh, what you don't see and what you may not realize is that it's actually not rolling at all. This, I've got this attached to a stick. It's actually rotating around the stick. But what is true is that instantaneously, the motion of rolling, like rolling down this hill, is identical instantaneously to the motion of orbiting around this axis. See, I've got this, this stick right there, and orbiting around that axis is identical to rolling for one instant. You can see, it kind of looks like rolling when I do this, rotate, it does look exactly like rolling there. So for that one instant, those motions are identical. So we have found that it in fact is rotating about that point. It can be considered as such. So that's our new axis of rotation. Now the thing is, our I about the center of mass of the sphere is 2 fifths mr squared, which would have to be given to both uh, AB Physics 1 and 2 and AP Physics C. But that's not the rotational axis. So we got to figure out the, rota the moment of inertia about this star right there. Now, AP Physics C kids will have to figure this out using the parallel axis theorem, which is ICM plus MD squared. Uh, AP Physics 1 or 2 kids would just have to be given that, but we're going to figure it out uh, with the APC kids and other the AP 1 and 2 kids can just sit and watch. So this will be 2 fifths MR squared plus M times the distance between the center of mass axis, which is right there, and the, the new rotational axis, which is just that distance from there to there is just R, R squared. That gives us 2 fifths MR squared plus 5 fifths MR squared gives us 7 fifths MR squared is the moment of inertia about our new rotational axis right there. And as long as you remember to do that, this becomes incredibly simple. Watch how easy this is. Once we get that, our new moment of inertia, we're going to be able to solve this with one equation. But let's go ahead and draw our free body diagram to get all the forces. Okay, so we've got mg acting at the center of mass. mg. We've got the normal force acting right here. Normal force. And notice I put the uh, tail of the arrow where it's acting. We also have the force of static friction acting right here. Here's the force of static friction. Fs. Now about our new axis of rotation right here, reminder, what can we say about the torque that these forces exert? Well, let's take the easy ones first. The force of static friction. Does that exert any torque about this axis? Well, what is R? The distance from the axis of rotation to the point of force application. Notice that the force is being applied right there. So the R is zero. This exerts no torque. No torque due to the force of static friction. How about the normal force? Well, let's look again at the uh, line of action of this normal force. Notice it goes right through the axis of rotation. And R is zero, so no torque for this either, for the normal force. No torque. So the only force that can exert a torque is mg. That can exert a torque. So notice that I'm, just, and you'll you'll notice I'm about to skip the translational analysis. Turns out we don't need it. Let's just look at rotational. All we got to do is the net torque about our star axis equals I about our star axis times alpha about that axis. So here is our alpha right here. I'm going to draw it like this. If it's rotating about this point, alpha is kind of like this. It's rotating like that. That is going to be the angular acceleration. So let's go ahead and figure out what the torque is. 
Uh, torque, the only force that's exerting a torque is the force of gravity. So it's just going to be the torque of gravity equals I about the star axis times alpha. And what is the torque of gravity? Well, it's going to be the R cross F of gravity equals I star alpha. What is that R? Well, notice that the R is always the displacement from the axis of rotation to the point of force application, which is that. That is R right there. That is R. And that's just the radius of the sphere. So this is going to be the cross product gives us R F G times the sine of the angle between them. And here's what I'm going to show you right here. The angle between these, you've got to put them tail to tail. So I'm going to draw this MG like that, tail to tail. And this is the angle we want. I'm going to call that angle phi. That is not equal to the theta that we are usually have right down there. I forgot to put the theta in. There it is. Now, since phi and theta are supplements, RFG sine of phi, notice that phi, here, this turns out that's theta right there. So this angle phi, the sine of phi and the sine of theta are going to be the same thing. Doesn't matter for sines if you put them uh, tip to tail or tail to tail. The sine of the angle, very forgiving, it'll be the same. This will be R, uh, and I'm going to substitute in this, FG is just M times G times, it will be also equal to sine of theta, the angle right there. That'll be I star alpha. Now, uh, good news here is that there's only one equation. We're almost done. I'll use blue for this. What's the translational acceleration that way? A, AX, it is true that if alpha is that way, and AX is going to be R alpha again. Because it's the same R, it's, it will be R alpha, the same R's that we always use. So this becomes RMG sine theta equals I star times uh, A over R. We get to use this AX over R thing again. Almost every time, we will replace alpha by A over R. And notice that, uh, let's do one more step, MG sine theta equals, this is going to be, as we found before around the star axis, it's 7 fifths mr squared. And then this is ax over r. So we get a whole bunch of cancellations. This r cancels that one. This r cancels the other one. The masses don't matter. Put the 5 sevenths on that side. We get 5 sevenths g sine theta equals ax. Now, personally, I think this is the easy method. It really only involves solving one equation. The one trick is you either got to determine the moment of inertia about that contact point axis, or if you're in the AP Physics 1, you'd have to be given it. But I think that's the easiest way. You have got to decide for yourself which one you like. Any of them will work.